Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Glenda Chavez and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to refurbish this table. So this table I actually got from Facebook marketplace for free. If you haven't watched my latest Facebook furniture flip that is where I got this table as well. So it was from the same owner. She attempted to paint it with chalk paint. It doesn't look very well. I'll bring you up a little bit closer so you can see. So this is what the table looks like up close. It looks like she may have tried to paint it with some white um, chalk paint and then she may have spilled some chalk paint on here as well <laughs> I'm not sure and then on the bottom or the underside of it looks like she tried to paint that as well and then this is also painted and you can see here there's a lot of drip spots so I've got my safety glasses my respirator I am using this quick strip it works supposedly in 15 minutes we'll see I've only ever used citrus strip and that has always worked really well for me but I was trying to see since this says it works in 15 minutes if it really does and I'm working outside so I'm not worried about the fumes or anything like that because I'll be wearing a respirator and we're outside so uh, we've got plenty of ventilation my stripping shovel or scraper I've got just a chip brush to apply the stripper and of course some gloves because it is caustic and it is dangerous to your hands. My hands are already so dry from just being cold out here. Look at this. I probably need to apply some lotion. They, <laughs> they look awful. Anyway, so let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to remove it so it might make it easier for me and a little bit more maneuverable so I can work on this. Let it sit and while this sits with the stripper I can actually get started on the bottom part. So. Let's go ahead and remove this. Maybe. I followed the instructions on the label of the stripper and shook it really well before applying a very generous amount on the tabletop. I used my chip brush just to make sure and spread it out evenly. I like using these kinds of brushes because you can literally just toss them once you're done with the project. And they are very inexpensive. While I waited for the stripper to go to work, I began sanding the bottom by hand and let me tell you, I very quickly realized that that just was not going to work. It was going to take me way too long. So instead, I ended up sanding what I could with my detail sander. Since I didn't want to accidentally over sand and ruin the shape of the main leg post, I applied stripper to remove whatever paint was still there. about 20 minutes and this is what it looks like it's bubbled up quite a bit and it's lifting perfectly it looks like they might have used latex paint on this instead of what I thought was chalk paint this for sure is chalk paint but I think this is latex paint because it's literally just peeling so anyways I'm gonna peel this away and then reveal this beautiful wood underneath. After stripping, you always want to go back with either mineral spirits or paint thinner to deactivate the stripper and remove any tacky residue. I did this by lightly scrubbing with some steel wool and then wiping away with a clean rag. Sometimes it does take more than one round of stripping to remove the paint and the existing finish on the furniture, so I followed the exact same process for the second round. While I waited for the second round of stripper to work on my top, I didn't waste any time and I began scraping away the paint off of the leg post, doing exactly as I did for the top. Mm -hmm. 
As you can see here, there was definitely still plenty that the stripper removed after the second round. I personally don't like stripping because it's very messy and time consuming. I try to avoid doing it as much as possible, but when I'm trying to get the raw wood look and back to you know what it originally looked like before, then I 100% recommend stripping any existing finish before sanding. To sand, I use my Orbital Sander and 80 grit sandpaper, making sure not to apply any pressure and allowing my sander to do all of the work for me. For my leg posts, again, I didn't want to risk damaging the rounded edges, so I opted to sand by hand. Although it's very time consuming, I definitely think that it's well worth it, in my opinion anyway. For the bleaching process, I took my bleach and diluted it by half with water. You can definitely do a lower or higher concentration if you wanted to, it's just honestly up to you. Be sure to spray your bleach evenly to avoid any blotchiness and don't oversaturate your wood. You can always come back and do another round once it's dry if you want to go lighter. All right, so I'm gonna wait about 30 to 40 minutes for this to completely dry before I decide whether I'm gonna do another layer or coat. And then we'll just kind of take it coat by coat and seeing how the results look after each one. If I want it to go lighter, then I'll just keep doing more and I'll catch up with you guys once I have done as many coats as it takes necessary to get to the color that I want. All right guys, so this is what it looks like after just one spray. I've already gone ahead and smoothed it out with my 220 sanding block because I don't know if you guys know, but when you spray it with the bleach, since it's water, it does tend to raise the grain of the wood. So to smooth it back out, just lightly sand it once again so that way it's completely smooth and i think i'm just gonna leave it like this with just one spray last minute decision i am going to actually spray this one more time so i'll catch up with you guys once i've sprayed it again and we'll see how light we can get this thing As I waited for the second bleaching round to dry, I began whitewashing my leg post. I'm using bare chalk paint in the color white. The way that I find it easiest to do a whitewash finish is to very lightly dip my brush into the paint and then spray my brush with a lot of water to help dilute it. You can also dilute it in a separate container, but I don't know, I find that this can be a little bit more wasteful. After applying the color, I immediately wipe it off using a lint-free rag. I work in sections to avoid the paint from drying on me, and the longer you let the, dry, the paint dry, the more color uh, the wood will absorb. Remember, you can always repeat the steps to add more color, but you can't take away unless you want to sand. To seal the bottom, I use bare decorative wax and clear. Doing two rounds of the bleaching gave me the color that I was looking for, so to seal, I used four coats of water-based polyurethane. I did sand with 220 grit between each coat. Once everything dried completely, it was finally time to assemble it back together. Remember what this table used to look like?
This is what it looks like now. As always, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and if you made it this far into the video, again, thank you so much. Your support truly really means a lot to me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more DIY content with me. Be kind and I'll see you guys next week.